So, Mr. Altmaier, thank you for being here with us today. Uh, I have a general question, which is, what is the effect of the war in Ukraine when it comes, and I'm talking about the, the one thing you would choose when it comes to Germany or uh, German defense? Well, the um, war in Ukraine is a big challenge for freedom and democracy in Europe. I'm optimistic we will meet the challenge. The second point is that um, we are facing a recession and uh, this recession can be more easily overcome uh, if we strengthen European unity, European solidarity uh, between poor and richer countries, between smaller and bigger countries, between East and West. And the third challenge is that uh, we have to make sure that Europe remains a leading economical, political and technological power worldwide because we have seen in this, in this Russian war against Ukraine that um, Russia uh, has been unsuccessful uh, because it was an economically weak country, a technologically weak country, um, and therefore one lesson is we have to spend more for defense, we have to spend more for research and development, and we have to implement our research and development results uh, in industrial projects uh, worldwide. You mentioned before in your speech that um, we, with the help of NATO, with EU countries being under the umbrella of NATO and with uh, the EU integration and being together, we can help countries advance. But when it comes to defense, in some cases, um, the needs and the, what is important for one country, it's not the same as the other. So we've already said we need to make sure defense is uh, strong enough. Would you? Do you believe defense has to be under the umbrella of NATO? And if yes, what will happen with uh, the EU defense on its own and the countries that in some cases NATO interests are not exactly? We have to develop synergies. Uh, and that means the uh, issue of European defense and of NATO defense uh, cannot be seen as exclusive. Uh, they have to be seen as interactive. Uh, NATO has proven the most, um, um, uh, the most efficient defense tool for freedom and democracy after the Second World War. Therefore, we need NATO uh, in the future as well as we need it today. The second point is Europe has to do more within its own backyard uh, to um, make uh, his security interests respected. And that means we have to strengthen our European defense cooperation. Uh, and between the two pillars, NATO on the one side and Europe on the other side, uh, we have uh, to develop a close mechanism of cooperation uh, that will allow us uh, to develop the pillars not at the expense of the other pillar, but uh, in order to strengthen both at a time. Um. Going to the energy part, uh, we, you, we discussed it a bit, uh, you, you spoke a lot about it during your presentation. I'm just going to repeat uh, the very basic question. How big a mistake was Germany's policy towards Russia, especially its over-dependence on Russia energy exports? Well, we have seen um, um, a, a large share of Russian gas exports uh, and imports in many European countries, Germany at 55%. But the share increase was also very high until the um, uh, beginning of the war. Uh, and this is the result of the fact that the Russian uh, pipeline gas was uh, the only pipeline gas that was available for a very long time um, in, uh, in Europe at affordable prices. LNG gas was damaging for the environment, more polluting uh, CO2. Uh, emissions uh, and at the same time more expensive. Uh, the question is um, why did we not develop earlier our own energy resources uh, in Europe? There are uh, gas fields uh, in the Mediterranean, uh, there are um, shell gas uh, uh, fields uh, in several European countries from the UK uh, and in Germany as well. And the point is, when will Europe be able to develop a coherent energy strategy where we can reduce our dependency from imports from third countries uh, and uh, where we can uh, provide the necessary backup for the renewable energies when wind is not blowing and sun is not shining? 
the last just a remark on that. I mean, we try to reduce our dependence on energy on Russia. I mean, we're, we're forced in any case. Uh, then we have a deal with Baku, the EU, and now Baku is buying from Russia. So, I mean, what's the logic in it? Isn't it a bit? Well, we are living we are living in a globalized world, uh, and uh, this goes back, by the way, uh, to um, a Greek uh, efforts in the Hellenistic period. Never before the world was so interconnected than in the Hellenistic period, uh, and today still, with the help of the internet, with the help of uh, modern transport uh, and supply chains, uh, we have developed globalization uh, to totally new frontiers. Uh, I believe this is in the interest of mankind. It will help us to spread the ideas of freedom and democracy. But at the same time, it is sustainable uh, and uh, acceptable only uh, if we can reduce the um, um, vulnerability of our supply chains, if we can uh, avoid total dependency from one uh, or two countries, uh, and that requires a lot of efforts in the future. Uh, we have seen during the COVID-19 uh, crisis uh, how much we were dependent uh, from exports uh, from Asian countries. Um, we have, as the European Union, um, uh, asked the uh, producers and the consumers to diversify supply chains. It not, did not happen. Uh, and now my impression is we have understood we are entering a new era this new era does not only require more uh, expenditure for defense uh, issues, but it also requires more resilience of supply chains and uh, more efforts uh, inside the European Union than so far. Thank you so much, Mr. Altmaier, for being here with us today. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you.